Good morning, friends. It's a beautiful morning here in western Tennessee. And I'm reminded of the verse in Job chapter 12, Ask the beast and they shall teach you. There are many, many things God wants to teach us through the creatures that surround us, the little animals. You know, you have the deer, you have the uh, raccoon, you've got the squirrel, you got the ants. But in Job 12:7, when it said, ask the beast, I'd like to take the beast and change that to ask the birds and they shall teach thee. You know, the birds have a lesson to teach us. In Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 2, verse 12, it says, the flowers appear on the earth. You know, that means that it's springtime, right? The flowers appear on the earth. And if anybody's ever been walking around in the springtime, you know that the birds are very happy and they're singing a lot of songs. So Solomon writes, the flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds is come. <laughs> Those birds are happy and they, uh, they're making a family. And uh, we just had a wren building a nest in the bottom of our little cabin over there. And Darlene said, don't disturb the wren. You know, let her hatch the eggs and, you know, raise that family. Because that wren was singing. That wren was happy. And uh, it was a nice lesson as we watched the wren care for the little chicks, uh, little, little whatever you call the little baby birds. It was, uh, it, it was a nice lesson. Now, if you uh, think about your own experience you probably can look back and see where God has used something, some creature in the creation to bless you and teach you a lesson. Some may be sweet, some lessons may be bitter. When I was, uh, here's a picture of me a long time ago. I was quite young. My family took a vacation up to see my grandma. She lived in Oneida, Tennessee. Nice railroad track going in front of her cabin way back up in the hills, real quiet place. And my dad let me, uh, gave me a shotgun. Yeah, gave me some shells. First time I'd ever held any kind of firearm, any kind of shotgun in my life. He gave me a shotgun. He said, you know, go out and target practice. So I got the shells, showed me how to put them in, loaded the shotgun, walked down the railroad track, and I saw a, I saw a post, some kind of sign, and I shot the, uh, the, the post. And you know, a lot of noise. That was the first time I'd ever shot any kind of firearm, any kind of gun. And then right after that, I saw a little bird come up and land on a limb. Not very big, just a small bird. Maybe a wren or a sparrow, I don't know. But I took my, my shotgun, I aimed, and pulled the trigger, and the bird was just obliterated. And I walked over, and again, I, I was not a Christian, but dear friends, these uh, creatures, they speak to the hearts of everybody. I mean, they speak to the hearts of everybody. And I walked over and looked, what I, looked at what I'd done, and I just, it was, uh, it was, it was not, it, it was troubling. I was troubled. It's something that I never forgot to this day. I'm now 65 to this day. I've never forgotten it. It's a, it, I, I'm sorry that little bird because of my callousness and carelessness had to die. My friends, I got a lesson about life that I never forgot. And when I became a Christian and started reading Matthew chapter 10, I got to verse 29, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. The Lord sees us, and he sees the birds. And of course, when I kill that bird, it didn't just grieve my heart. I'm sure it grieved God's heart. That's what it says in Matthew 10, 29. But in verse 30, even the hairs on your head are numbered. Verse 31, you're worth more than many sparrows. So the lesson is that when we suffer, if God cares for the sparrow, how much more does he care for us? That's a lesson that comes through the creatures, through the birds. Job 12, 7, ask the beast and they shall teach thee. Now, when my wife and I became Christians, uh, went into full-time ministry with an organization, health ministry, and then ended up in Western Tennessee at a health center. I take my walk in the morning. My wife got up early. We both got up early, took our walks. I'd go out, you know, just crack a day, but that's when all the birds are out singing, right? Especially in the spring. I go out 
And I remember my first experience with a, uh, with a little feathered friend. It was this blackbird sitting on these reeds in this field. But it wasn't quite black because when it would fly, you'd see this flash of color on its wing. And so as I, as I watched the bird, morning by morning, the birds, because there were two, three, four, five, there, there was a little flock. I noticed when they'd fly, it would flash kind of red, like a little yellow streak too sometimes, but it would flash red. And I got my book, I looked it up, that's a red-winged blackbird. And, and what, what the lesson I got from the blackbird is that when fall came, there are no more blackbirds. I see them every morning. And then day in the fall come, no more blackbirds. I thought, yeah, that's, that's, that's sad. I enjoy seeing the blackbirds. But dear friends, spring came and those blackbirds came back. And I thought, right then, when, uh, when, the, when, when fall comes, I'm not going to see those birds again. And I didn't. The birds had a season. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. To everything, there is a season. The birds have theirs. That's right, friends. And we have ours. So in the fall, the, uh, the birds, they left, but they came back. Life has its seasons. There's a time to be born, time to die, verse 7, time to speak, time to remain silent. God has a perfect timetable, not just for the birds, but for us too. I also uh, saw kingfishers. I'd cross the creek there on my walk, and these kingfishers would be flying, and uh, they'd be just making this beautiful call as they were fishing for their, for fishing for their breakfast. And every morning I'd see those kingfishers and hear them. And that was just encouraging. I think God gave those birds there to encourage us, among other things. You know, they beautify the landscape. They make beautiful music. And they encourage your soul when you hear it. And uh, kingfishers, uh, red-winged blackbirds, you know, even before then, you know, before my wife and I, uh, we, we, we changed our mindset, uh, our, our, our religion changed from basically atheism to Christianity. But back before that, when we moved out of Atlanta, we started building a cabin in a place called Mentone, Alabama, out in the woods in the country. I one day was sitting outside. Uh, I was sitting under a tree and a bird flew up in the tree and I looked. I'd never seen anything like it. I was, I was coming out of Atlanta. In the city, you don't see a lot of birds. Now, if there were birds there, I never noticed. This bird came and it sat on that limb. And I thought, what in the world is that? So Darlene had a bird book, right? We, I looked it up, a uh, cedar wax wing, just iridescent wings, almost like glowing. And I thought, I've never seen, and it had like black flashes around it, so I like had a mask on. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. And then shortly thereafter, I saw a, a, a full red-headed woodpecker. And if you haven't seen that, you got red, you got white, you got black. It's stark contrast of colors. Absolutely beautiful bird. And I would see these birds. And I would see beauty where I'd never seen beauty before. So it was the birds, the trees, the sunset. So many things were speaking to my heart. Psalms 19 verse 2 Day unto day uttereth speech. What are they saying? Back in verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. So I was, I was saying that to everything, there is a season. And so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll end with this. You know, in, in Luke chapter 12, the Bible tells us, this is the teacher, right? The book of nature teaches us. God speaks through the book he created. In John 6, 45, it says, They shall be taught of God. In Luke 12, 12, it says, The Holy Ghost shall teach them. Luke 11, verse 2, uh, Lord, teach us to pray, as John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. And in verse 2, Jesus said, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven. So the Lord is uh, teaching us directly through providence, through prayer, and through the book of nature. But when Jesus is baptized, about to start his full-time ministry, in uh, Luke 3, it's verse 22, this, holy, this dove descends from heaven. But it says the Holy Ghost descended in the bodily shape like a dove upon Jesus. Now there's the teacher. Certainly the beast of the field can teach us. The red-winged blackbirds, the cedar wax wings, all the, these different birds. They've got lessons to teach us. 
My friends, that dove, the Holy Ghost, He is the teacher that speaks through the creation. So my hope for you and for me is that we're going to be reading lessons in the book of nature, not just from the uh, four-legged furry animals, but from these winged creatures that bring joy to our hearts and beauty to our eyes. I hope you have a blessed day. May God continue to teach you and help you and give you a peace that passes all understanding.